Although we are sharing this year's events virtually, the festival is based in St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador, and we respectfully acknowledge the land on which we gather as the ancestral homelands of the Beothic, whose culture has been lost forever and can never be recovered. We also acknowledge the island of Uktahumguk, Newfoundland, as the unceded traditional territory of the Beothic and the Mi'kmaq, and we acknowledge Labrador as the traditional and ancestral homelands of the Inuav Ntsinan, the Inuit of Nunatsiavut, and the Inuit of Nunatuhavut. We recognize all First Peoples who are here before us, those who live with us now, and the seven generations to come. As First Peoples have done since time immemorial, we strive to be responsible stewards of the land and to respect the culture, ceremonies, and traditions of all who call it home. As we open our hearts and minds to the past, we commit ourselves to working in a spirit of truth and reconciliation to make a better future for all. Hi everyone, I'm Tara Taylor. Here joining with me is Jennifer Holness, president of uh, Hungry Eyes Media, director, writer, producer, and Sud Sutherland, amazing director. Um, we are here at the St. John's Women's Fest Film Festival to celebrate this amazing film, Subjects of Desire. Uh, Jennifer brings the fresh, authentic perspective to telling powerful, thoughtful, provoking stories. Jen directed her first feature doc, Subjects of Desire, both Black Women in Beauty. It had its world premiere at the SXSW and was awarded top 10 audience favorite at Hot Docs. The documentary will air on TiVo and Crave in Canada next year. Along with her creative work, Jennifer is a dedicated advocate for diversity and mentorship. She is a founding member of the Black Screen Office. Amazing. Wow. Thank you, sister. <laughs> a national organization that advocates for creatives and direct and producers in the screen-based industry. And says it's one of the top direct directors in Canada and has won numerous awards. Um, the first Black team to win at TIFF for Love, Sex, and Eating the Bones. Welcome, welcome to the St. John Women's, Women's Film Festival. I guess I'll just open up the floor by just asking Jennifer and Stas, what inspired this amazing film? <laughs> Thank you, Tara. Um, well, um, one of the things that Suds and I are actually married, and uh, typically Suds is the director in the family, uh, doing dramas and, and um, series and that kind of a thing, and we create uh, and write together. But um, I have not directed a documentary in in uh, like almost two decades, and um, and certainly not a future one. And so, what inspired it? long way to get to it is that we have three daughters <laughs> and they're teenagers and you know I was noticing that as they were growing up they were going through some of the issues that I was going through when I was growing up being a young black darker complected girl and I thought that um, a lot of the problems I had of not being seen not having um, um, beauty icons a lot or not a lot of beauty icons to um to look to to ground myself I thought that you know gee whiz that would be over and I realized that uh, if I'm talking to them that they were going through some of the same issues I I had even though there were more iconic women for them to look at so like the Lapidas and the Beyonce's but still there was something wrong, something that was making them feel like they didn't um, fit in, that they weren't beautiful in the way that they should, you know? So that was, that was the main inspiration for me to make the film. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, three daughters, wow, congrats, y'all. <laughs> um, so did, how did you arrive in at uh, brainstorming, I guess, what you would cover in the film? So like uh, I think about issues of colorism and and like you mentioned, um, uh, dark versus light skin and, and navigating through your world. Um, and that makes sense that they would still have these feelings because Lupita, while amazing, is still not in your, your you know, our immediate circles to, to be inspired every day. So what kind, how did you come to um, choose what issues you were going to really uh, focus on in the film? Well, I, I feel like there is a power behind beauty that is dismissed by the dominant culture because they're, it's, they're the standard. So 
what that means is that white beauty is, is upheld as normal. And so there is this almost dismissal of um, how black women have been placed historically that has diminished our, like to diminish our beauty. And so I wanted to look at first and foremost, the power behind beauty. I wanted to, us to stop pretending that, you know, the only issues we face as women is about our economic, um, you know, uh, power. Yes, our economic power is absolutely important. And we as women have to strive to be who we want to be in terms of our mental and our, our work situations. But to pretend that um, beauty has not been a factor in how other women have moved in the world was ridiculous to me. So that was one of the things, power, the power behind beauty. And then in terms of things like colorism or hair, I think for me, I wanted to dispel the myths that had been created about us that are pro proliferated in the media almost every day, in fact, every day, but they're so normalized, we don't even think about them. So things like the angry black woman, anytime a woman has, uh, speaks her mind, she's angry and therefore cutting off her power. Um, the Jezebel, black women are so over-sexualized that you don't need to protect them. When they're murdered or raped, you know, and we, you know, and in the documentary will show you, black women are raped at a higher level. Black women are um, uh, sex trafficked at a higher level. You would never know it based on how media focus on the media focus. But that's also because the idea that black women are so sexualized, sexually deviant, they are, you know, it, it's, it's, it's them, that's the actual problem. You know, and then uh, the mammy, you know, if you are in fact a, a darker skinned black woman and a heavy set, oh, good Lord, your job is to take care of everybody. And, if, <laughs> you know, and, 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 and you want that job. You know, and these stereotypes. So I wanted to, because they pigeonhole black women and yeah. they keep them in, in, in boxes. And I want, so, so that's, so for me, it was about how do I dispel these myths? And that meant going back in the past and looking at the source of how these narratives that dominate how we're perceived, how they were created. Wow. Brilliant. Thank you, my sister. And I just wanted to um, hear from Suns, uh, you as dad, you know, how it's how has the film landed on you in terms of supporting your daughters in this and, you know, navigating this world of ours? Um, uh, how, how has it landed on you in terms of? I, I think that as a Black man who's a father and living with four Black women, <laughs> Uh, because the, from they come out the womb, they're women. <laughs> so they, they're, you know, especially after they get a cell phone. But I think it's been a lot of listening. It's been a lot of listening. And I think that by listening, I've learned a little bit of a, of a window into their world um, in terms of like, I, I mean, as a guy, you are understand heartbreak from a guy's point of view, but you don't understand what it means to feel pretty. You, mm. or what why how why that's important so that was something that I learned uh, as I grew through you know having these girls and so and and then helping raise them so in terms of the the process of of listening to all the women that are involved in in this story and listening to Jen as she's trying to hone in on the ideas about how to develop the story and how to even who to follow um it's 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 this thing of of listening a lot deeper and shutting your mouth up you know because I think that as men we need to listen a lot more um to to what women are saying in general I've always felt that but in terms of like as we're looking at the beauty the power behind beauty one of the reasons why it's been disregarded is because it's the province of, of quote-unquote women you know so like men have ignored this and and not really sought they've only sought to sort of take from it and so I think that as black men, you know, we're been brainwashed from from first contact. So that's another we got a lot of unlearning to do. And so yeah. this, I think, is a part of that unlearning. Um, this the, the discussion around the issues in this film and the, and the stuff that this film brings up. Um, and again, there's a, 
this is not a film that you're, you know, it's not like, again, I don't want to cite another film, but like, okay, Dark Girls, you know, I mean, that was like really depressing. And we didn't want to make anything like that because that's not how I believe, you know, dark skinned women uh, go through the world. I mean, there, there's, sure, there's some sad parts, but then there's like everybody else, there's a happy, wow. life is happy and sad. So we, we wanted to do what Jen, I, I know wanted to do, she wanted to make a film to show how black women navigate the world. Yeah you know, through these stereotypes, through all of the other stuff that's put upon us and how we navigate in triumph. And that was the story that I think that she wanted to tell more so because we've got daughters who run the gamut of like shades, you know, in terms of like, you know, how diverse we are in the same family, got something like, you know, <laughs> like my sister is like, you know, what we call high yellow and I'm, you know, I'm a <laughs> yeah. So it's like, we got the whole gamut of shades. So we wanted to be true to that and just to be, you know, to, to show how black women have triumphed over time, resisting oh. over time from first contact. Because honestly, as we go and do this historical research, we see the amount of stuff that is put upon us in terms of slavery and, and how we survived and thrived through that. It's, it's insane. It's mind boggling. And we owe that to black women, period. Done. Wow. Thanks. So that's amazing. And I just want to, again, I'm going to probably say congratulations it's all over the place because it's just so gorgeous. And um, I just want to commend you on the, um, the cinematography of it. The, I don't know if you intended to, but even we talk about the different shades um, in the different uh, subjects, but the different hairstyles, you know, we have natural, there's braids, there's dreads, it's so, oh my goodness. And it's just such a, it, does, it doesn't offend, it just informs and it celebrates, you know, so it's, it's just, oh, hats off. <laughs> so can you just speak to um, the choosing of those subjects? Like, were you keeping those things in mind or did it just kind of, you know, how some things are divine and it just comes together anyway? Thank you, Lord. Um, <laughs> just speak about how you were choosing your subjects and just um, making sure that you portrayed all that, all that uh, diversity. Well, I mean, you said thank the Lord and I, and I do thank the Lord because, so I had an idea without a doubt. So, you know, I, I really had a clear sense of how I wanted to film the women. I wanted to, for example, film my um, contributors, my participants in natural settings wherever I could, because I've always felt like as a black woman, I was very grounded in nature. And, and it's also, I think, you know, whatever, zodiac sign or whatever, I don't know. But I've always felt very grounded in nature. So uh, placing them in those spaces was really important. Two, in terms of the pageant, which was really interesting was that, so we were able to go to the pageant, to the Miss Black America pageant on its 50th anniversary, which was incredibly lucky. That was God, right? So the year I was in development was the 50th anniversary. And so I, we cobbled the money together to go down there with permission to film. And when we were there, we, I, I was trying to identify who I thought would win because I would then oh. follow up with them. So people think it happened the other way around if it didn't. <laughs> so, so, cause we didn't know who was gonna win. And, and you know, that was the, like, that was our development period. Well, three of the five women I interviewed won. Won the pageant, came in first and then came in second runner up. Won't so, you do it? <laughs> I don't know girl, but I was, I was watching carefully. I was like, <laughs> okay, who has the shine? But this is a testament to both the pageant and to um, Black women in the sense that um, the pageant shows quality, like to me, everybody's wonderful, but like the people who rose above. So it tells you, it wasn't about all, I don't know what else it could be, but it wasn't about frivolous things. These were the women that felt really like deserving. They were brilliant. They were talented. They were smart. So for me, and again, it's in a pool of talented women, these stood up. And the fact that they would win speaks to the, the pageant itself. So I interviewed one of them naturally, two of them, it was the, the last they were able to film there and we had no place to take them. And we went into the bathroom <laughs> 
And we, so in that orange room, that is the, the bathroom of the hotel in the basement. Okay. And I was like, and I, was like I, I said to Seth, we need to get nobody getting girls. in here. I'm filming. So we, need, like, we cannot leave without filming these girls. So we, so we filmed both Soraya and uh, Alex Brilliant. in the bathroom. Anyhow, so they win. And so I followed them after, after that to say, hey, um, you know, would love to, to come and interview you and get a bit of your life story and all this kind of stuff. And they all said yes. And so, and then here's the thing. I mean, because we're black women, when I met Soraya, she had a black fro. When I went to interview her the first time, she had an orange fro. She had dyed her, her fro orange. And the third time I went to meet her, she shaved her head off completely. And <laughs> <laughs> versatility. Right, the versatility, right? I mean, you know, and Alex, a series of different looks. So, but, and what I wanted to do with the film was celebrate this. I think that one of the things that's been happening or has happened and some of it through black men, black women have been dogged by the versatility of our mm. hair. So it, it would always be like, look, she has a weave on or something bull crap like that versus <laughs> look at the, the, the sister is doing the most. Today, she's got a big fro. Today, she's got a straight weave. Tomorrow, she's got cornrows. I mean, so I, I Check wanted that to- creativity. Right, right, or braids or whatever. So I mm -hmm. wanted to, I was so pleased with this. I went with it. I, I wasn't like, oh my God, how could you do this? How could you shave your head? No, I was like, oh girl, let's get you into that field of flowers because, and yeah. uplift your beauty. So that was what I was trying to do. You know? <laughs> I was trying to say, this is us and and, yeah. and and we do and this play that we do it's actually unique and special and fun and it's because it, it is fun it is super fun you know and so I wanted to show that and, and celebrate that in the film yes and I think it came through so amazingly and so let's just talk about that how have audience um been taking this in like what messages have been coming across them have they have they shared this with you what what's been what have people been saying about this film okay well, well so that's once you because i always feel like uh weird talking about myself and my film I'm like you know, oh, like, oh yeah they put my <laughs> Who else is gonna hold us up if we don't hold ourselves up and others around us? Thank you. I think, I think Jen should get like all of her flowers, but like the the truth is, is that one of the things that people take away with is the um just for the pageant, like just like those women in the pageant. I don't know how people understand pageants or whatever, but this particular pageant, they talk about the camaraderie. Like yeah. these women are all like they know one person's gonna win. They know that. But they're there and these women are still friends. They're still like, wow. and, and they are there helping each other. They're networking. They're, they're all across the country, but they're, ne they're still, still hearing each other. They're still talking to each other and supporting each other in their, in their careers. So these women, like there's a point, moment where they're singing the Lauren Hill song in the, in the film. That's real. And we really wanted to include that to show that these Black women are together. They're there for each other. And that was like something contrary to whatever I learned about or heard about beauty pageants up until that point in my life. So that was one of the takeaways. There's a sisterhood in effect. There's actually something going on where these women are supporting each other and it's beautiful. And that was one of the main takeaways. Um, and, but people are crying. People are like saying like, I feel seen. I feel validated. I think that I thought I was crazy. I thought I was the only person going through this. And these are big women who are like almost 60. You know, uh, uh. and, and uh, all, also 18 year olds. So we've got everybody in between that. And this is a great film for families to see because they're coming in and bringing their own stories to it. They're, and they're telling Jen and my, myself their own stories and how they, their experiences. Now that mirrored that, you know, time in my life when kids were calling me this or whatever. And, and just saying that that validated the feelings that I've been having. Uh, and so that's people, people feel really seen and heard when they view this film. And that's been overwhelming. And people are just like, I want to see this with all my family. I'm going to bring everybody. And, you know, that's <laughs> been, you know, what it's, you know, that's been fantastic. You know, like the, the people, uh, the response to it. I mean, there's a lot of tears. There's a lot of love and a lot of support. So we've been really proud with how people have been receiving this film. 
It's beautiful. We have a lot of love for y'all for bringing this film to the world. <laughs> and so, I mean, things I've done in my life, you know, the, the films I've made, you know, I, I always love it when the audience, you know, will let me know what's going on. But then I go to my children and I'll say, so what'd y'all think? Oh, it was nice, mom. So, <laughs> so we spoke about your daughters earlier. So I would like to know, have they actually been spoken about what the film has done for them? You know, what, you know, what, are they letting mom and dad know, like it's, it's giving us power. We, we are seen, you know, <laughs> yeah. that's they a great, you know the goods. <laughs> that's a great question because two of our girls are in the round table. So oh, yeah. So yes. Crazy, yes. So the, the young lady with the dark, um, beautiful dark complexion with the long braids, who uh, um, talks about um, her boy drama a little bit um, and pretty for a dark girl. Um, that's one of her daughters. And then there's a, a moment where two girls talk and um, and one of the girls says, I I know all about Rain's boy drama. But without a doubt, you're a beautiful person. So that's my, our other daughter, Deja. And so it's actually one of my favorite moments in the film. Um, and because and what, what, what had happened was originally people had said, oh, Jen, you should um, be in the film. And I actually hate being on camera. And <laughs> I mean, I've gone through 20 years uh, of making film and television. I think there might be five photographs of, I've taken on set. I mean, the whole time. <laughs> so um, I just never do. And so um, I was like, no, I'm not gonna do that. Um, but because the girls had really inspired me and, and the younger one is a little bit younger um, at the time when I was doing it, she's 14 now. Um, because the girls inspired me, I thought it would be great to have the voice of some young people in the film. And I thought, well, who, who to start with? But, but, the, my girls and I asked them to find a couple of other girls and so they found three other girls um, people that they know are close with a little bit and and um, and we had a round table there was no coaching there was no uh, they were given nothing other than we put them in a room put some pillows on the floor yeah. and I started to ask them questions and and they spoke from their heart and uh, you know and um, it was really beautiful and I know that a lot of young people who, who do see the film they really love that conversation that the young the young people are having mm -hmm. and and again it was really important because you see that even in a time when black women's features are being um, fetishized and coveted and um, duplicated um, that they still don't feel beautiful. So what is it? And I, mm -hmm. and I believe it's the narratives that we have to dismantle. And, but the thing also though, what I, what's really nice is that they, they've come to a place, all those girls, which was really interesting, had also come to a place where they're like, they, where they have rejected you know, um, the, 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 the dominant narrative of beauty oh, and have come to a goodness. place where they're settled into themselves. But here's the thing, it's a lot of pain to go through to get there. Mm. And, it, and I'm hoping, and so, so the, the, to answer the question, yeah, they have seen it. And, <laughs> and actually, this is the first time in our careers, I think, where um, they're, they've been like, wow, mom, that's, pretty cool like <laughs> good as opposed to eh, you know hey, I like it, cool but, now. <laughs> yeah, so, I, so yeah so it's a long answer but it's been uh it's I think I'm it's I'm gonna tear up now but um, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's been um it's been really great to have my yeah. my daughters um um like like the film and want to share it with their with their friends oh. <laughs> that's what it's all about oh it's beautiful <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just take it all in <laughs> oh and i just i love the um the sister who i believe she uh, recited one of her spoken word um in the in the the film so who who is that was that someone who was uh, one of your daughter's friends or no she's one of those she came in she was a third place um, uh, she came in, I guess, second runner up, but she won top talent. And that's the other thing. So for me, you know, I'm making this film and I wanted to profile these women in a way that would help them, you know? And so when we, um, when we interviewed her, she recited her poem and she's a singer and she sang. So 
I then, when I did my interview, I made sure that I, I, I asked her to tell me when she was gonna do a performance. So I, I interviewed her um, when, she did, when she does the performance, we see her singing. And I use that, I, I commissioned her, her music and I use it in the film, you know? And my hope of course, is that people will hear how beautiful she sings and it will help her career, you know? Um, you know, Alex um, wants to be an actress. And so, uh, you know, I didn't, I wasn't able to catch her performing, but um, I, at the end, I identified that she was in um, um, Dream Girls. Dream Girls ah. and, uh, you know, and so forth. And then of uh, course- Local production. Yeah, yeah Girls, local, not the yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> local production. Like, yeah. It's off and, off Broadway. Yeah, I know, exactly. And then Ryan, you know, is um, a, a spokesperson and so forth. And so I, I, I interviewed her, um, showed her at the school, given a presentation and all that kind of stuff. Wow. So I was really trying to really profile the women in a way that would be beneficial to them. But, but the woman who sings, the young lady who sings is Soraya Nicole, who just has a beautiful voice. And she wrote that song, you know. Oh, um, so innovative yeah, of you, like, oh yeah. my goodness, so innovative, so entrepreneurial, because, you know, it's, it's nice that you show her that there's other things you can do other than do that on stage, you know, to take her music somewhere else to show her there can be scores in a, in a film. And so can we just go down the path of the awards that this film has won? <laughs> <laughs> well, just talk, I just want to know how, you know, how you're taking that in, how you've celebrated that, what, you know, just how has that been for you and what awards, what specific awards? Yeah. Well, uh, thank you. I'm, I'm very excited. Um, we actually won Best Documentary at the San Francisco Black Film Festival, Best Documentary at the DC Black Film Festival, um, the, the Creative um, Spirit Award at the New Hope Film Festival. Um, we, Hot Docs were top 10, um, top 10 uh, film, audience film. And we, I was just nominated for the DGC Discovery Award. Yes. So, mm -hmm. so it's, it's, it's very cool. And I've also been nominated from various other festivals as well. And um, the festivals um, that are upcoming, I'm very excited, Rain Dance in the UK, which is gonna be our, our European premiere and Rain Dance is a wonderful festival to premiere at. Um, you know, uh, DOC NYC is coming up as well. Um, you know, yeah, for the New York City premiere, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, just a lot, a lot of great festivals and, um, and I'm very, very happy uh, uh, with the reception uh, so mm -hmm. far. Yeah. yeah, for sure. For mm -hmm. sure. You want to speak to the, how that's making you? <laughs> so hold that up, Mr. Suds. <laughs> oh, no, we're just going to keep on, you know, keep that ball moving and, and keep the momentum going because we're going to premiere on broadcast television in February. And oh, so beautiful. in the States, yeah. that's going to be on Stars on the Stars Network. Yeah, we made a great sale at Stars. Oh, right. Canadians, y'all. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. This <laughs> beautiful. Is, this is, yeah, this is great. We're really excited because they're going to promote it heavily. And then we're also going to be on TVO uh, in Ontario. Um, and that's going to be in February as well. So, um, yeah, we're, we're oh, and then there's, towards that. there's also TIFF, uh, the Lightbox is doing um, something, uh, a special event. Um, uh, so I will actually have a theatrical um, release at the Lightbox. Oh, wow. In November. Yeah, November. Yes, like grass there. all around. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, okay, so <laughs> the future of this film, you know, where, I mean, well, you just said it, you know, it's going to broadcast. That's where you want to be. I mean, I got stars on my Roku. <laughs> I can't wait for it. <laughs> so just, I guess, speak about, um, yeah, like what, what's next? Or, you know, is there a part two to this? Like, will you delve into other issues? Because you just celebrate us so well. Like you just celebrate women so well. Thank you, Lady Queen. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just want to know, like, are there any ideas for the future of this particular film? Um, I don't know, sequels or whatnot, or just um, a series of other issues? Yeah, well, I have to say that I'm, I, I'm a very curious mind. And so I tend to, like once I go through something, I, I did a lot of, there's a lot of research that was done in this film. And I really, I spent 
a good year and a half, like, and Suds will tell you, I read everything. And um, so, I mean, I really know this topic. <laughs> um, so, but now I want to do something else. And so actually I'm, I'm doing, two, we're doing two things. One is like, we just finished um, shooting um, a series called BLK, An Origin Story, which is about Black Canadian history. And I feel like wow. we're doing something that's never been done in this country. We are going to tell the story of Black folks from sea to sea in Canada. And we're going to be the first to do that, I believe. And um, we're, we're looking at Ontario, uh, Quebec, Nova Scotia, and Vancouver to tell the story so, that we have. And um, mm, so, do that. <laughs> yeah, so I'm very excited about it. And yeah. Suds and I, um, we are, uh, well, we created the, the doc series and we're show running and we're both directing and, um, and it's, it's um, and then, um, yeah. And so it's been kind of cool because we hadn't co-directed since the our very first film. Right, yeah. so that's wow. kind of neat. So, <laughs> that's special. <laughs> no, it's been a really good process, and and seeing people, and again, like the question was, well, what, how do black folks get here? Yeah, and it, it it seeks to answer that because we've been here since the 1500s, and so a lot of people think that it's only recent immigrants that that have been here, but it, the truth is, you know, we've been here, we've been here, so since the mm. 1500s, so wanted to explore that but also talk about like how we've navigated Canada to get to this point and so the question that a lot of folks have is like well what's the black best place for black people to be in, in Canada? <laughs> and and you know we don't we don't answer that by, by any stretch but it's a great question to ask because it's like well how do you form your community how do you form how you make your community where we're kind of atomized all over in a place like Vancouver let's say where we're one percent of the population so these questions we are really interested in asking and, and, and talk to black folks across the country. Uh, and there's a great list of black folks, you know, <laughs> thinkers, creators, writers, uh, artists. Yes, yes. George Elliott Clark, Larry Hill. Essie yeah. Adesian, I mean, um, Dr. Charmaine Nelson. Nelson. Yeah, we yes. Got, yeah, we got like fantastic people in talking about what it's like to be in black, what's it like to be in Canada and be black now as well as back in the 1700s 1800s also because we don't even talk about slavery that that, that had been here for 200 years we talk uh -huh. about the Underground railroad which is like uh -huh. 30 years but we don't talk about slavery so we wanted to talk about that too so it's something that we're very very proud of as we're in our, our editing phase but it's going to be on tv in february uh, on history, uh, on history, on history television. Wow. Y'all yeah. are doing it. <laughs> and then, and then one other last. Thing. My heart. I know. <laughs> I'm really excited. But the last thing is a personal project. I, you know, I'm working on a doc, a new doc called No Harm, and it's about Black women and what I see as medical terrorism on Black women. Mm, mm, mm. Now that is that's going to be tough. I don't think I have a dry eye watching that. Yeah, that's 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 tough. <laughs> you just got me right there, just hearing that. Yeah. Um, I well, first I I don't want to leave without me just saying like you you all inspire me, and I'm sure anyone who's, who's going to watch this and see this is going to be inspired. Um, thank you for mentioning that you're uh, a couple because you know just seeing a queen and her king, king and his queen and the three daughters. Um, my gosh, like just thank you for being such a positive black family. I hope that there's something done on that too. <laughs> in the future because <laughs> y'all are a beautiful example of that working together it's so lovely um i will be interviewing in the future asking how did that go <laughs> um yeah so i guess um i just want to just make sure i got that in there and um congratulations i just i just want to ask too um another thing that kind of comes up in the circles is you know, just because we're, we have brown skin that we're always, um, you know, people are always looking to us to only report about and make documentaries about movies about, about our issues and our color. So I'm just wondering, and I heard you say, Jen, that you like your mind is always going, you have, you know, things in your mind. So are, are there anything like, I don't know, sci-fi movies or whatever, anything that you thought that, of making or, or um, doing a documentary on that doesn't have anything to do with the, a black female, but, but 
thank you for what you're doing now because you're you're hitting it. <laughs> it's, it's it's a great, it yeah, it, it, it's 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 a great question. And here's the thing. I um yes, they are. And what 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 it's really interesting if you actually look at America. I, it took me a long time to, 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 to recognize this, but they mostly only let black people make black content, like yeah. work about black people. It's a very strange thing. And uh, you, it's very, very strange. And you have to be so incredibly famous mm. to, to step outside of that. There's a box. Mm. Um, and so a lot of the work we've done has been actually quite multiracial. So we did a mini series called Guns, which was um, a, a multiracial cast uh, that had black families and white families. And we did a series one season on CBC, Shoot the Messenger, that had a white female lead. Um, you know, but, but here's the thing. There is a lot of stories already that exist about uh, white families and white people and and whatnot and it's not to say that I have no interest in writing or creating work around the, those you know people outside of the black or diverse communities because I'm very interested in the in the diverse people of color communities um, so it's not to say I um I, I, I won't ever work outside them but right now when so much of our young people have grown up not hearing their stories, not seeing themselves. Mm -hmm. I think that um, I am incredibly grateful mm -hmm. for the opportunity to work in this, in this area, to, to play in, in the story world yeah. of black people and people of color because our stories are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So I am I I I want to be a part of the movement that brings these stories to the table. Yes, brilliant. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I just appreciate um, where the the care that you take in the in what you do choose to do a documentary on. Like you said, you do a lot of research and. I mean, that's important because some of us think that we can just pick up a camera and do something in a couple of days and we're good. <laughs> so it, it just goes to show the amount of work that you put into it, like the awards and just the reception and where it's going. So um, I, I would love to see, do um, you think you do any workshops uh, in the future? <laughs> I do a lot, actually. I'm doing something for hot dogs. I, Suds and I, a lot of our career, we have actually done a lot of mentoring. There's not been a lot of Black folks who were able to work in the national level. And it's been really hard for us. We've busted our butts. And 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 sometimes you just want to quit because of the reception or how you're treated or how people, you know, relegate you to a certain space. So it's been, you know quite challenging. So as a result of that, we spent most of our career actually doing a ton of mentoring. It's exhausting. It, it is in fact. And so, I mean, but I, I, I've done something for almost every single organization, CFC, <laughs> NIS, Hot Docs, I, you name it, I've done it. And then, and then Suds personally works with a black male youth group. So oh, we, we, we do a ton. Um, so we just have to look out girl. And yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're way in the East Coast. I need to come up to TO for a little minute. Well, you know, I, I, all of that brilliance. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I, I listen, you know, kudos to you too. The work that you're doing, where you're doing it and getting it done, it's a big deal. Yeah. So I, I say kudos to you and absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's incredibly busy, but like, send me an email. I mean, I, I'll do my best. Sometimes I can't because it's crazy. But <laughs> like, what are you doing, Jen? Say no, say no. <laughs> uh, it's, it, the, the truth is, is that we, we do a lot of mentoring and this company is about mentoring. We're, you know, like right now actively looking for a CMPA, you know, young person who's interested in producing to mentor. Um, and so like, cause I, I think that one of the things that we are at a stage in our career is where we're, we're supposed to be training the next generation. Yeah. And so we've been, we've been doing that. And so we continue to do that because we like being around young people and also yeah, shaping. It's our nature. Yeah, Absolutely. that's right. You're right. And, and so that's what we do, you know, in terms of like even going across the country, like during on this project, like we all we've been looking at people 
and they are mentoring. Everybody's mentoring. That's what we want. That's what we're trying to do as Black folk is try to train the next generation. Um, and so in, in, in so doing, it, it can be exhausting, as Jen said, but it's, like, it's something that we do. We just something that we naturally do at this company and on an individual basis. Um, you know, but I, I think that uh, the, the workshop thing. Yeah, we're always doing that. Oh, always have. Oh, like, wow. <laughs> All right. It's time for her to get some funding together to get up there. <laughs> well, thank you. It's been amazing to spend this time, like I said, in your brilliance. It's only on Zoom, but I'm feeling all of that, that power, <laughs> that inspiration. Um, you're a powerhouse, the two of you. Thank you so much. This has been amazing. And thank you folks for tuning in um, for the St. John's Women's Film Festival. And we are out and going to, well, I'm going to watch that film again. <laughs> 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 All right, All right. take care.